Hey little willies. I just spent the past three weeks of my life living with the greatest YouTube scientists of all time. And I'm not talking about Mark Rober. I'm talking about the science boys who pick up their phones when I call. The backyard scientist, Peter Sreeple, and Alan Pan. Do you know how much fun it is to spend three weeks with YouTube scientists? We blew stuff up. We did science. We harassed other YouTubers, and I took pictures of everybody with my old school hipster film camera that I bought on eBay. It's a medium format film camera called the Baronica ECTL2 from like the 1970s. If you wanna see some of the sexy pictures I've taken with this guy, you can check out my Instagram. I love this thing because I can capture pictures that I don't get to see for two or three weeks until they're developed and scanned. So I can relive all my memories instead of just having them happen again all at once. You're like, oh, here's my digital camera, let me take a thousand photos and see which one looks good and then post on Instagram. I just wanted to share my hobbies. I feel like sometimes I have to get straight to the point in these videos and I'm never allowed to share any interesting details, but I want to. This video means more to me than you might initially think. The Backyard Scientist is the first man who ever believed in me. Not my father, it was Kevin. When I first started my YouTube channel, Kevin was the first person who promoted me for no reason other than just because he liked my videos. And that's what started my YouTube channel. Kevin, I feel like I owe you a lot and uh, I'm very, very grateful. So let's put on our finest Hawaiian shirt and our safety sandals because I don't think there's a better person we could collaborate with for trying to push a cotton candy machine to its absolute limit. We're gonna pour molten salt into it at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait. It says it's a thousand something degrees. I can feel it. We're gonna pour molten lava, real lava, not YouTube lava, real lava that melts at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and pour it into a cotton candy machine. I'm going, I'm going. We are going to push this cotton candy machine to its absolute limits and probably break it. Ah, ah. There's one more thing I gotta do really quick. The sponsor of today's video is Bespoke Post, a membership club that delivers awesome products from under the radar brands. Here's the first box I picked. It's a Damascus steel knife, and I'm really impressed with how organic and handmade it looks. It's a nice, short, stubby little utility knife with textured Damascus steel and brass rivets. This looks like something that a craftsman made. It's immaculate. I almost feel bad using it, it's so nice. And a leather sheath so you don't accidentally stab yourself. The other box I got is uh, a utility bag. Check this bad boy out. It opens up nice and big. Like this is fantastic. It folds super flat. I don't know how they normally measure the size of bags, maybe volume or something, but uh, to give you an idea of how big this one is and how much stuff you can store in it, well, Jimmy's in it. They spoke even has a quiz you can take to try and match you to boxes they think you'll like. And even if you don't like the box, you can change it for something different or skip the month entirely. They even have a live oyster box, which for whatever reason, couldn't ship to me, and I'm very upset because I really like oysters. They show up live, and so they can't be too far away, and I am not in one of those places. Thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. If you wanna check them out, you can go to bespokepost.com and use the coupon code William to get 20% off your order. <sighs> Here it is. <sighs> A brand new cotton candy machine. This is what you get for $170 or $180. I'm seeing a lot of metal already. This is a pretty good deal. <laughs> the way the cotton candy machine works is you have a big box that has a motor in it and some electronics, a heating element inside of this candy crucible. It heats up, it melts, as it spins, the candy kind of comes up to these thin openings and it sprays out into thin little strands. Those tiny little holes. Yeah, That's tiny, nice. tiny, tiny little holes. The temporary piece rate of electric motor of is 80%. You know, if they spent half the time working on the design of this as they spent on the service manual, this cotton candy machine is gonna tear it up. Dude, this thing's gonna fly. For our control test, let's make some actual cotton candy right now. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like I got too much wine, that's amore. Do you want some cotton candy? Let's see if we can make cotton salt. How funny would that be handing someone a big pile of cotton candy, but it's actually three days worth of sodium. The only problem is salt melts at nearly 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. And the cotton candy machine is made out of aluminum, which melts at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's gonna be a disaster. You pick that thing up, it spills on the floor, it splashes on your pants, it's oh, fire. No, we're not gonna do that. It's been less than 10 minutes. Damn, boy, it's hot in there. Look at the salt fumes. The whole crucible is so red that you can't see anything. Those fumes scare me. Yeah, they do. The salt is like water. Whoa, that's crazy. Pour it. 
Whoa, Whoa. look that, it beads up too. I'm pouring. No, it didn't work at all. I'm gonna pour it on top and have it fling off. Whoa. It's like snow. All right, Kevin, so it looks like what we've done is we took salt and turned it into salt. Take three, we have heated the crucible really high. Whoa, it's work. Well, it, it, it came out. <sighs> Damn it. There's a couple pieces where it almost looks like it wanted to do it, like. Oh, look at, yeah, like little fibers. Like right there, like little flakes. I think we might just be kind of screwed. I really wanted to see salt cotton candy, but I don't think it's gonna happen. When sugar melts, it gets tacky. When salt melts, it just turns into water. The entire process relies on stretching the fluid out. So if the salt doesn't get tacky and it just beads up, how are we ever supposed to create fibers? As a man who believes in the great Bill Nye in the sky, the most responsible thing we can do right now is consult an expert. So I asked Nile Red, who said, yeah, I think one issue though is getting it to be a fiber. I think to do that you need friction between the molecules, so longer chains is better. Salt is just a bunch of ions. That could be totally wrong though. All my cotton candy info is based off anecdotal evidence. Okay, I think we're screwed. Let's move on to something else. It's string cheese. I'm not eating it. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Why not? I think, will, will the cheese melt before it burns? Oh! Oh, 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 stuff's coming out. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Something's happening. Oh, you hear it? It sounds like popcorn. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. We did it. We're, dude, we're geniuses. Cotton cheese. All right, let's test it out. Dude, this stuff just does smell kind of bad. It tastes like cheese. Oh, look at that. Oh, the cheese is oozing down the walls. Oh, look at it. It's like, it is stuck. Oh, look at that. So now we're zero for two. And the worst part is the cheese was way more destructive than the 1500 degree salt. We have invented a new glue, an adhesive so strong it bends metal. Elmer is shaking in his grave. <sighs> what happened? This milk-based glue is going to do for horses what cars did for horses. Wait, do they still make glue out of horses? It looks like a pizza. Holy crap, this is the one of the grossest take things bite, I've ever take seen. A bite, take a bite. I spent the next 30 minutes cleaning all the cheese glue off and was able to hammer the crucible back into shape. Check it out, it works perfectly, I fixed it. The only problem is I've had too much sugar, so we fed the cotton candy to the dogs. I can't even see your face anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's put no. lava in it. No, let's go to sleep. Okay. Here we have the prototype Florida man. <laughs> he works outside with relatively heavy equipment, with no shoes, no shirt. Another day, another experiment. This morning, it's putting Flintstone vitamins into a cotton candy machine. Don't forget to crush them up first, and uh, let's throw in a few Benadryl for good luck. Who needs an iPad when you can babysit your kids with medicated cotton candy? Someone at the Bayer Medication Company is having a panic attack right now. <laughs> so the main ingredient of the Flintstone vitamin is sorbitol, which- It's a lower melting point than sugar. I'm scared to put it in without a little bit of sugar in there. Yeah. Into the machine, yes. It's, it's behaving really like poor, like it's like really yeah, it's bad. Really oh wow, what a surprise, it doesn't work. I'm starting to notice a trend. Every time something goes into the cotton candy machine that isn't just sugar, it doesn't work. All the stuff that doesn't melt gets stuck and the molten sugar filters through it. All right, now we'll do the same thing we've done like a thousand times and clean up the disaster that has unfolded. Oh, look at that. Ooh, now we're cooking. Mmm. Hey Kevin, what are you doing? Cleaning off. You gotta work, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ah! We tried boric acid, firstly because it has a similar melting point to sugar, and second because it's sold as roach killer and somehow Peter's room has cockroaches and nobody else's does. This sucks, <laughs> nothing works. We tried rocket candy cotton candy using potassium nitrate and sugar, but that didn't work. But I'm really sure if we spent a couple days working on it, we could probably get it to work. But we all combined have the attention span of a single squirrel high on crystal meth. Maybe you could dissolve the sugar and nitrate in water, then cook it, then grind it into a fine powder, and then stick it through the cotton candy machine. But even then, it probably wouldn't work. Why does none of this work? 
We have been skunked over and over and over. But there is one last hope. There's a few products you can buy industrially that are manufactured in a very similar way to cotton candy, fiberglass and rock wool. Both are insulators. They take glass or rocks, melt them really hot, and then spin them really fast. And we happen to have a bag of lava rocks Something to heat them up with and something to spin them really fast with. God, sometimes you just feel like a failure doing these experiments. The lava's been cooking for like, I don't know, close to two hours. Yeah. Has it been two hours? By God, <laughs> is it no longer rock shaped. In fact, it's liquid. It is completely turned into like this goop, like this awful, awful, awful goop. Look at this. Oh. Like that's nutty. How much hotter can we get it? I don't know. This has got to be like right at the edge of what we can do with, with gas. Look how long those dragged out to. The lava is easily over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. So let's suit up, cover ourselves in aluminum foil and open the portal to hell we've created in Kevin's backyard. I got my safety chonies. You got your safety hat. We got homemade metalworking tools. Let me tighten it really quick. We have a deal. Oh dear. Oh, oh my god. Oh god. Are we ready? Yeah. I'm pouring. This is so bad. I'm going, I'm going. We're making rock wool. Oh my god, Peter, get it close to me. Oh my glove, dude. My glove is so hot. My face is so hot right now. Ah. Just, just. Oh. Yes. Yes. Dude. Oh, that's amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, the only thing that turned into anything resembling cotton candy was molten <laughs> rocks. The lava's been drawn so thin that it's flexible. Oops. I can't believe this worked. The cotton candy machine looks absolutely melted. Yeah. Well, I think it got unbalanced. Oh my god. I, I don't even know what to say. I didn't think this would work. The lava was pulling chunks of aluminum with it as it was pouring. So. <laughs> that might have been from inside the crucible. Do you think so? Yeah. Like, I think what surprised me the most is that it didn't seem to care about being forced out the gaps. Cause you could just, once you got it like ripping, yeah. if you hit the dude, disc, dude, it like, it would rip the molten lava to the side and yeah. cast it out into a strand. This is a success. We fiberized lava in a cotton candy machine and simultaneously pretty much destroyed it. I think it might still work. The whole bowl is like warped. Look in the back, it's all waved, like the whole thing sagged. Is it? Molten yep. lava Is this actually, we made- Volcanic glass formed with lava is extruded from a volcano. From a cotton candy machine? Oh. Yes. So we made obsidian cotton candy. You literally did. We are YouTube clickbait Dude, gods. Science gods. I cleaned the cotton candy machine up and good news is it still works. If you would like to win a cotton candy machine and the leftover banana sugar we have, leave a comment down below. I'll send you the whole cotton candy machine. Well, actually Kevin's gonna send it to you cause it's at his house. And the winner for the Tesla we exploded a couple months ago that I forgot to give away is on the screen right now. So if this is you, send me an email 